Welcome to Tech Tutorials Part 3 of the PHP Social Networking site. We are going to be creating our database for our users. So start up WAMP server and go to uh, localhost slash php my admin. Once uh, php my admin is loaded up, we're going to create a database called Social Web. And keep in mind that PHP my admin is just a GUI for commands that can be executed through SQL. So you don't typically have to use PHP my admin, but it makes things a lot easier. So once you have social web, you're going to hit create. Um, it, it, we're going to keep it at UTF-8 general CI. That's like the uh, character encoding. And I have uh, no idea what this is. I guess we could do that. All right, hit create. So now that we have created Social Web as our database, we're going to be creating a table called Users. And Users is going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 uh, uh, data points in it. So hit Go. And we are presented with a screen here for uh, the different types of information. So the first one is going to be User ID. The second one's going to be user username. And keep in mind that I'm doing user underscore and then the type of data, uh, just because I think that's a lot easier to manage. And then user F name for first name, user L name. And we could uh, make these just one. I think that's what I'm going to do. User full name. And then we're going to uh, denote the first and last name with a pipe character. So I've changed that user, and then we're going to make this one email, user password, user priv for privileges, and this comes into uh, hand when we want to see if the user is an admin or if they have uh, certain uh, privileges to be able to edit something. And then we have user IP. This tracks down where the user last accessed the social network from. I scroll down here. And the last data point is last access. And this will store a timestamp uh, showing when the user last accessed or the website. And this will also come into hand when we want to do the little this user is online right now kind of feature. Like in Google or in Facebook, you can see it has a little green dot next to the person that's currently there. We can store a timestamp of the last action from that person and uh, show the person is being online from that information. So for user ID, we're going to keep it an int. And we're going to make the length 8, just because that's uh, kind of what, I, what my default is. We're going to leave coalition the same. Uh, we're going to leave this default 2 the same attributes we're going to make it unsigned index we're going to make it primary and then this ai means auto increment we're going to select that because the, the user id is going to go one two three four five through ten or through uh, n amount for uh, uh, the n amount of users that sign up and this is going to be the unique id uh, e representing each user so for the user username we're going to be making this a var char, and I'm going to allow usernames to be 25 characters long. And it's going to be in UTF-8. Uh, to scroll this up a bit. Usually there's one below it. Yeah, there we go. UTF-8 Unicode underscore CI. And this is not going to have any attributes under it. Okay, so for the user full name, I'd say we make this 150 characters since uh, people's names can be fairly long. And once again, we're going to make this UTF-8 CI. Oh man, that didn't work. Okay, yeah, that's taking too long. Okay, so for the user uh, email, we're going to also make this a varchar, and I will say the emails are probably going to be about 125 characters long at most, and if it isn't, then the user is 
going to be prompted to create a different or uh, sign up with a different email and for the user password passwords are going to be encrypted through MD5 and MD5 always produces a 32 character long uh, hash of the password so for this we're going to do varchar and we're going to do 32 and we could do 50 or we could do any number here but the more refined we get it the less space it takes up to store this information and we're going to make this uh, Unicode. Alright, so now back to user uh, privileges. Uh, I'm going to make this actually uh, an integer uh, because I could have a role based, uh, I believe it's called role based uh, privileges, where users can have read and write privileges, and some users can be able to edit something, some users can be able to read something, and there's probably going to be maybe five or six of these scenarios so if we just do an integer with uh, one one integer meaning it can be zero through nine I think five can fit through zero through zero through nine so that that'll cover it in the least amount of space that will take that, that it will take up in the database and we can make this an unsigned integer okay so for the user IP this is going to be a varchar and uh, three times uh, four, twelve. So twelve is the maximum amount of numbers for an IP plus the three dots in between. So twelve, uh, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen is going to be the most amount of uh, characters that user IP will take up. And I believe there's actually a special, uh, a special. Uh, SQL uh, command for uh, inputting IP addresses and tables, but we are going to be using uh, the uh, NODB, which one, NODB storage engine. But some storage engines do not allow you to use uh, IPs and uh, various other tables. So we're going to keep it simple. We're just, you know, we're just going to use varchar, and we can also represent an IP in a different way. But that gets a little bit more complicated. And for user last access, I'm going to make this a timestamp. And it's going to be a, yeah, there you go, timestamp. And we're going to leave this last uh, field here. We're going to leave it like that. And just a little bit about storage engines. Uh, my ISAM is a uh, the default storage engine for SQL. And I, I have to use this one for my website because my website, TigerTutorials.com, doesn't have NODB. But NODB, the advantages to uh, NODB is that it allows you to do transactions with money. So you can do like rollback and you can, you can uh, commit things. And, and those are the only features that NODB offer. And then CSV is a comma separated value. And that stores it in a file almost like SQLite. Uh, black hole, no idea what that does. Uh, collection of identical minus AAM, you can read that. Um, I've never used that. Memory, I think this is a uh, a uh, hash based uh, storage engine and hash hashes run on your RAM when you start the hash up and immediately once you turn your computer off or your server stops, your, your hash tables will then be destroyed and your database will then be uh, destroyed as well. But the only advantages to having hash based tables such as memory is that it allows for very quick access of your files and it and it, uh, cre it it's very efficient. But like I said, it, it's not a very reliable uh, option. So in this case we're going to be using uh, NODB and we're going to make the collation Unicode, and we're not we're not going to do anything for these partitions and table comments and everything. We're going to hit save, and it indicates here that table social web users has been created. Another thing to note in a PHP my admin is that all the code that has been executed always appears up here. So if I were to start up CMD and type in uh, I don't think I have it installed. Let me see if I can open it up with the WAMP server. 
So here's the MySQL console. And I'm not sure if I remember my password. Yeah, I don't remember my password, but the whole point is, is in CMD you can type in this code and it will do exactly what we just did, but in a CMD. And this, this requires a little bit more amount of attention, as you can see. We have to get all these character set things and collate and all this stuff. We have to figure that out and make sure that we put it in there. But I would highly recommend just PHP my admin as a source. And another thing you're going to discover is that when we make the actual social uh, networking application, we're going to be execu executing SQL code uh, exactly like this. And if, if we want to insert something into the database and we're getting errors, then we can just come back in here and uh, hit browse or insert and we can see how this generated its code and we can learn from how PHP my admin generated its code and then we can inject we can put that inside of our own local application and then the code will then work so that's a very uh, good thing to have uh, part for the tutorial is going to be I'm assuming uh, creating a, a the ability to create users